The second time was the charm here for Syracuse in the ACC tournament as the Orange takes home its first ever ACC tournament crown after beating the Duke Blue Devils 15 to 14 here at PPL Park. In their quarterfinal matchup against rival Johns Hopkins, Syracuse had to overcome four first half deficits and took the lead going into the second half. But it was the fifth deficit in the second half that proved to be too much as Johns Hopkins withstands the Orange's late push to advance to the Final Four. The last time Syracuse and Georgetown met in the Verizon Center was as Big East rivals. That's not the only thing that's changed since 2013, as Syracuse played its first game against Georgetown without Jim Beheim involved since 1959, losing to the Hoyas 79-72. After the game, the team talked about just how much they missed their head coach. Jim Beheim returned to his normal seat on the Carrier Dome bench, but the Tar Heels spoiled his homecoming. UNC leaves the Carrier Dome with an 84-73 win as Syracuse drops to 0-4 in ACC play. Syracuse does lose by 10. I mean, could you sense with the crowd, with the players, that there was a moral victory had at the Carrier Dome today? The players might say there wasn't a moral victory, but I definitely got the sense that they were satisfied with their performance. Zaire Franklin even mentioned that the players talked about, we know that Leonard Fournette's going to rip off some big runs on us. It's just a matter of staying in the game and not allowing yourselves to get down about that. Fournette had a big day, and I think there were some plays in the secondary they'd like to have back, but you really can't ask for much more than losing by 10 to the number eight team in the country when you're already down your starting quarterback and down to your fifth string starter and also missing one of your biggest offensive weapons in Irv Phillips. Syracuse fans have seen plenty of legendary running backs wear orange, but today it was an opposing running back who impressed. LSU star Leonard Fournette ran for over 200 yards as number eight LSU came into the Carrier Dome and beat Syracuse 34 to 24. The Orange hung around for a while, but Fournette and the Tigers were just too much to handle. Any team we play, can't sleep on them. You know, that's a great team we played against. You know, a lot of good athletes out there. You know, great coaching. You get a chance to play a Heisman Trophy candidate, you want to knock, you know, knock him backwards, you want to get after him, and, and you want him to no longer be in the Heisman race after you play him. That's the truth of it, and I know Fournette would appreciate me saying the truth. He's a great player. He's going to do extremely well for himself. He's really explosive. That's one thing I can say. You know, his vision is, is, is up there, you know what I mean? He, he, he's able to read his line and see his seam and hit it full speed, and once he hits the second level, so... Syracuse now has the week off, and with that, a chance to get healthy. Coach Schaefer says he hopes that quarterback Eric Dungy is able to rejoin the team when it takes on South Florida on October 10th. Reporting from the Carrier Dome, Marcus White, Citrus TV. It may not seem like it now, but Peter McCartney did not pick up a lacrosse stick until he was in middle school. He grew up in Colorado which was not exactly known for its lacrosse when he started playing. It wasn't really you know, a big deal back then. I was playing a lot of hockey, a lot of soccer, um, and playing lacrosse maybe two months out of the year tops. Now if you look at it, you know, kids are playing year-round um, at much, much younger ages than seventh grade. McCartney's home state is one of the fastest-growing states in the country's fastest-growing sport. According to a U.S. lacrosse survey, the total number of youth lacrosse players doubled from 2006 to 2014. But as the sport of lacrosse has grown, players here at SU aren't just from the traditional lacrosse hotbeds. And Coach John Desco says SU and other schools have started to look elsewhere for talent. Things have changed so much. I mean, you look at the rosters of all these Division I schools, well, two and three for that matter. Uh, you know, the places that the players are coming from, you never would have expected. Syracuse has players from those unexpected places playing big roles on this year's team. Redshirt junior defender and Texan Brandon Mullins leads the team and caused turnovers. While McCartney's roommate, Henry Schoonmaker, grew up in Oregon and is tied for fifth on the team in goals. And McCartney himself is third on the team with 28 ground balls. The sport's growth has benefited Syracuse, but Coach Desco says it's made recruiting much less familiar. All the teams that we recruit against, I would look at their rosters and uh, of their freshmen coming in, there might be 10, 12 players. I knew them all because we recruited them all now. Out of the 10 or 12, if I see three or four names that I even recognize, uh, that's a lot. Going forward, McCartney says he wants to contribute to the sport's continued growth in Colorado. I hope to eventually return to Colorado and you know, coach myself. Uh, if not right away, then you know, in a few years. I'm sure Brandon will, will do the same thing. Same with Henry. It's definitely something, something you want to get back to the game. I'd love to get back to kids who, who want to make it to a place like Syracuse. And as the game continues to grow, 
players like McCartney may no longer be the exception to the rule. Marcus White, Citrus TV.